Hi, I'm Justin and I'm a trained chef working in Oslo. Today I'm going to be making sourdough bread. This recipe is in my opinion the best sourdough recipe on the internet. I baked variants of this recipe for three years. I even was making this recipe at one of the restaurants I worked at where I would do this recipe times 10. It's from this blog called The Perfect Loaf. The link is in the description. It is 85% hydration which means 85% of the weight of the flour is water. So it's a very wet dough. You can't knead this like pizza dough on the table. It also has the perfect amount of whole grain flour for it to get the flavor, but not sacrifice airiness. Here I'm using whole wheat like the recipe, but I actually prefer using rye. This recipe takes from start to finish three days. The night before, I would mix together the starter so it will be ready in the morning. You could mix the starter in the morning and wait for it to be mature, which would take three to four hours, but I like to have it ready when I start. In the recipe, he's mixing in stages, starting off with an auto lease, but I like to actually skip this step to make everything go a bit faster. So I just mix everything at the start. I mix the starter with the water and then I add the flour and the salt and the whole grain flour. By doing an auto lease, um, traditionally you would get the flour hydrated beforehand so it, the dough will be easier to mix. So if you have time, it's nice to do but it's not, it's optional in my opinion you still, it doesn't change the end result that much. I'm still, after mixing, waiting half an hour just to hydrate the flour. And this recipe is also at 2% salt, which means 2% of the flour is salt, so that's 20 grams of salt, which is pretty normal for all breads. You, like a focaccia would maybe be 3% salt. Here I'm going to be using a Danish dough whisk, which just makes it a bit easier and you don't have to get your hands dirty. I just rinse it with hot water after using it, just to mix the flour and the water. Here you don't want to knead anything, you just want to hydrate the flour. So I just cover it with a wet towel and wait 30 minutes before starting the stretch and folds. I'm stretching the dough from the side, pulling it into the middle. I'm counting every time I'm doing this. So I'm doing this about 30 times for each stretch and fold. The first three stretch and folds are at 15 minute intervals. You do a stretch and fold, wait 15 minutes and then do another and the last three are at 30 minute interval. Here the dough is about halfway through the stretch and folds. As you can see it's a lot smoother. It's uh, gained more gluten, but still not where we want it. This is the last stretch and fold. I'm just wetting my hands to start off with. And here you can see the dough has gained a lot of gluten. It's folding over itself really nicely. The dough is bouncing back when I pull it. So, so I know it has a lot of uh, tension and strength to make sure that it will rise nicely in the oven. I'm starting off uh, here it's risen for two hours. So here I'm just sifting some flour on the bench generously because the dough is very sticky and here you don't want to push out any air bubbles. You just want to shape it so you can get it into your proofing baskets. So I'm just pouring the dough on the table with my bench scraper. Just dusting it liberally with the flour on top. And then I'm gonna cut it in half. 
with my bench scraper in about 900 gram rounds before shaping it. So I'm just lightly trying to keep the air inside, just shaping it into a circle. Dusting it with a little bit more flour so it doesn't stick, because this will be our top. And just flipping it, pulling it, folding it to the middle, folding over, then I'm pulling from the side, folding over there, pulling from the other side, then um, making about like a shoelace three times, and then just rolling it up, flipping it into my banneton. I'm doing one round one and one uh, long one. I'm just doing the same shaping again. This makes sure the dough has a lot of tension and makes make sure your dough opens up and gets that nice um, exterior. So I just like to let them rest for about half an hour, dusting them a lot with flour, making sure they don't stick to the banneton. Here I'm just going to cover it with a plastic bag to make sure they don't dry out. I'm just going to let them rest on the bench for about 30 minutes just to make sure they have as much air as possible on them before putting them in the fridge for 16 hours. Here's the next day. I readied some parchment paper. I'm using my cake stand so I can spin the dough around while making uh, incisions. Just dusting it with some flour just to have a blank canvas on top. Here's my lam. It's just a razor blade fitted to um, a stick, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just uh, taking out my Dutch ovens. They've been in the oven for one hour at 230 degrees. And just carefully dropping the dough inside of the Dutch oven. I'm just going to bake it for 20 minutes with the lid and 30 minutes without. So here is 20 minutes after baking with the lid. They've finished baking, cooling down down on the rack, making sure that they're cooked through by just hitting the back, making a empty sound.
Now look at those beautiful birds. A nice open crumb. This is probably one of the most rewarding things you can do in the kitchen.